despite all of the carnage and chaos that has begun to fall upon New York, a few places of business are still open. It's obvious that they have not had their radios or televisions turned on all day. A nearby dance club has opened a short while ago and is almost already a full house. Patrons are dancing, mingling, drinking, and having an all-around good time. A man notices a woman passed out by the bar. Her sexy snug top and disco jeans keeps his attention focused on her. So he goes over to an empty stool next to her and sits down. Hey, bartender. One Bacardi cocktail and that sangria for the lady here. You got him. Though the lady there has been passed out for God knows how long. Really? Well, she must have been in a race to get shit face or something and won. Haha, <laughs> maybe. Thank you. The man pushes the sangria drink over to the unconscious woman and tries to wake her. Hey, babe. Oh my god. You feel so cold. Well, uh, are you thirsty for a little sangria? <laughs> this, of course, turns out to be the man's unluckiest night of his life. He's become dinner for the lady he tried to score with. It's no better for the rest of the club's patrons. Infected bouncers and patrons that were likely snorting up coke creep out of the bathroom and lunge over to people closest to them. Some patrons try to fight their way out, but are cornered by zombies coming in from outside. Lots of zombies. No one makes it out alive. <laughs> Harriet and Eli are practically close to home, but they have been stuck between Bath and Cropsey Avenue for the last few minutes. The highway entrance has been under police blockade. Fuck! Why? Why did they have to block the entrance to the Belt Parkway? Why now? Calm down, Ma. It's probably a bad car accident or something. Well, if that's so, then I wish I was in it. I wish I were dead. Eli mutters incoherently oh. and then passes out. Eli? Eli! No! 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 Oh, no! <laughs> Eli! The whole time Eli shared his last conscious moments with Harriet, a group of zombies had been creeping towards her car. She was understandably distracted with being stuck in the street with Eli's condition, but she foolishly left the driver's window rolled down. Hey! What the fuck? Let me go! Harriet fights her way loose from the grip of one of those zombies. She succeeds, but then gets grabbed by Eli. <gasps> Eli! <coughs> Obviously, Harriet did not know when to be careful with what she wished for, because Eli rose from death to once again feast upon his mother's breast, and the other zombies feasted on the rest of her. Four of them pop in and crowd around to make it an all-they-can-eat buffet. It's a warm midday the next day, and a perfect one to cool off in the waters of the Orchard Beach from the Pelham Bay Park of the Bronx. Everything appears fine and dandy, from children scooping up sand in their buckets for building little castles, 
to beautiful young women lying around for a nice tan and from adolescents playing and swimming in the water with friends to older people collecting seashells. The lifeguards are content with this easy day of overlooking the beach for no one seems to be having any trouble or making nuisances of themselves. A couple has just pulled into the parking lot of Pelham Bay Park. Well, babe, here we are. The best park in all the Bronx. Well, there was also the botanical garden. Oh, come on, babe. Don't start that again. This place has got a beach and all, so I'm sure you enjoy it just as much. I'll try, but a long walk from here to the beach won't help me promise that. <sighs> a little walking's not going to hurt. You're not old and brittle. And besides, the beach is more or less than a minute walk away from here. And even a walk that short can go a long way for burning off calories. Uh, just what are you trying to say? What? I'm just saying that walking is good for you, especially while you're still young. It helps keep your body used to being active. Okay, just making sure you weren't getting wise about how you look in a bathing suit. <sighs> you're too much. Speaking of which, we should change here in the car. I don't want us bringing back any sand in our clothes. Okie dokie. Hey Brad. Yes, Sue Ellen? Do you see that big bunch of people over there? Yes, I, I hear them too. What the hell is wrong with them? Why are they walking so funny and groaning? I, I don't know, and I don't think I want to. They look like they've been in a bus accident or something. Look at them. Yeah. They look pretty banged up. A couple of those people notice Brad and Sue Ellen, and then they start approaching them. Several others tag along. Oh shit, I think they see us. Come on, come on, forget the beach, get in the car! Brad and Sue Ellen were lucky that the approaching zombie herd was a few hundred feet away since it gave them a chance to drive out of the park free and clear. Oh God, Brad, there were so many of them. I know, and I didn't want to stick around to see if they were coming for us. Oh God, those people on the beach. God help them. God help them won't cut it. The zombie herd has reached the beach by the time Brad and Sue Ellen had reached the way to City Island. The Orchard Beach has become a complete massacre. The herd was almost as big as the crowd of beach patrons, making them less able to fight their way out. The ravenous appetite of the zombies kept them from discriminating against who would feel the wrath of their veracity. This includes small children. The luckiest ones are those who got away with only a bite or two, considering the extremely painful end the rest have succumbed to. The end of being completely torn apart while alive. Things have not gotten any better for Brad and Sue Ellen. They have crashed their car on a blockade of police cars, which was right in the middle of the entrance to City Island. Both were hurt too badly to even move. This was the direct result of neither remembering to put on their seat belts. They are still conscious, but will wish they weren't. A group of undead cops have crawled over the car blockade. Brad, help me! are biting the shit out of Brad and Sue Ellen. Their screams attract more zombies to their direction. It's now dark and surprisingly quiet in the South Bronx area. A perfect night for one certain individual. A middle-aged man poised in a nice-looking car who seems to be on the lookout for someone. Suddenly, some street man pops in. Hey, mister. <laughs> oh, you scared the shit out of me. You got a few dollars you can spare. 
What do you mean a few bucks? You know, you people used to ask for, for quarters and nickels and uh, now you want a few bucks? Oh, can I have a dollar here? Can I have a dollar there? Uh, why don't you get a, get a job or something? Whoa, 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 come back here, come back here. All right, look, I'm sorry, look, 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 look. I'm sorry, look, look. You see this $100 bill? Whoa, 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 not so fast, buddy. You gotta earn it first. I, 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 I do have a little job for you. Huh? A job? Yeah, hey, yeah, it's quick and easy, don't worry. Uh, what I gotta do? Okay, here's what you gotta do. Look, you see in the back seat of my car, there's that, that can of gas? Grab it. Hey, 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 take these matches too. Now all you gotta do is get your ass up there on that roof over there and, and light it on fire. Then get your ass down here as quick as possible and this hundred bucks is yours, okay? Deal, man. All right, now go on, scram, do it. <laughs> Can't wait to collect on that insurance money. <laughs> so the man takes direction and heads for the slum he sent to commit arson on. He makes it past the entrance, then walks over to the front flight of stairs. However, he begins to hear sounds of raspy breathing, <sighs> followed by slow footsteps. Letting his curiosity get the better of him, he goes to see who's behind those noises. <sighs> A group of zombies have tackled the man to feast on him. And of course, succeeded. His screams attract more zombies from the upper floors. They all creep down to where the feast is going on and join in. What the fuck? What the fuck's going on? The man outside, who is obviously the crooked landlord of that slum, heard those screams and quickly prepares to turn on the ignition. I'm getting the fuck out of here. But he's ambushed at gunpoint. What? Give me your wallet and get your cracker ass off the car! No, no, this is not happening. Oh my god, no, 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 no. You think I'll play? Please, just take my wallet. It, it, don't leave me here. Man! Get the fuck out the motherfucking car, motherfucker, now! Nah. Okay, shit, shit, fuck, okay, I'm getting out of the car! I'm getting out, look, look! My hand's in the air! The landlord reluctantly obliges and gets out of his car. Then the stick-up man drives away. You know what? I just filled that tank with gas, motherfucker! Leaving him out in one of the most dangerous parts of New York in the middle of the night. God damn, motherfucking spit! Son of a bitch! You left me out here! Hordes of zombies pop out from each tenant building on the block and approach him. What are these fucking things? What the fuck? Ah, oh, gotta get out of here! He attempts to run away, but eventually runs into more hordes of zombies, crawling all over the street and blocking his way. Oh, oh, get off of me! Get off of me! Oh. They have him in their clutches, but he manages to free himself by sliding off his overcoat. He looks at all other directions to see if any of them are clear, but none of them are. He's S.O.L. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh. But then, he sees a building that looks clear from the outside. He immediately runs over to it and jumps up to reach its retractable fire escape ladder. Luckily, he's tall enough to reach it, so he manages to pull it down. He climbs up, and then proceeds to the very top fire escape. He starts slamming on the windows. Hello! Hello! Help me! Help anyone! Please! Open the window! No one answers, so he takes off one of his shoes and starts pounding it hard on one of the windows. It breaks, and he quickly gets in. He storms into the living room, and once again, he's S.O.L. What the fuck? Ah! No, get away! Get out! Get away! Ah! Oh, my God! Ah! 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 There is absolutely nothing left of him that's intact. 
the zombies greedily feast upon each severed remain. More screams of pain are heard in the distance from that slum. They are coming from alleyways. The homeless and crack addicts who hung there have also perished under the wrath of the hungry undead. It's after hours in a triple X movie theater in Times Square. A few men are sitting in one of the screen rooms watching the smut that they had paid their couple of dollars to watch. The oral gratification scene on that huge screen is obviously a little much for one of those men to handle. Or rather, handle being reminded of his lack of a sexual life, especially with a woman as beautiful as those that appear in each porno. He assumes it is dark enough in the room for him to not be seen doing what he's thinking of doing. So, he slowly unzips his fly, pulls out his erect Johnson, and begins to rub away. Suddenly, some young woman walks into the screen room. She's dressed in a uniform, so it's obvious that she works there. She notices men in there and sets her sights on the masturbating man since he's seated in the aisle near the doorway. The girl slowly walks over to him. The man sees her. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. You should uh, expect this to happen now and again in places like these. Am I right? The girl does not answer. She just keeps walking over to him. Look, darling, I'm sorry. I just couldn't help it. Hey, what are you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, baby. Hey, man. Shut the hell up! The girl has got the man's Johnson in her mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, 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 what? Ah, fuck. Ah, Holy ah, fucking shit! Ah, Yo, let's get the fuck out of here! See? One should never engage in any lewd conduct in public. You never know how bad the consequences can get. But in this case, they got really bad, to the point of genital liberation by a zombie. The other men have escaped the screen room through the emergency exits, but unfortunately lead themselves into hordes of zombies from outside. And of course, carnage ensues. <laughs> From the porn theaters to the arcades, all of Times Square is under attack. <laughs> it's morning the next day in Jackson Heights, Queens, and a woman has just finished getting herself dressed and ready to start her day off. She then goes to wake her two children. Okay, guys. It's time to get up now. <laughs> oh, come on, Mommy. Give us a few more minutes to sleep. Yeah, Mommy, we're still tired. Sorry, kids. Time to sleep is up. It's Sunday morning and time to get ready for church. <laughs> I'm tired. I want you both dressed and in the kitchen in 15 minutes. So chop, chop. So, once she leaves her children alone to get themselves ready, she goes to the kitchen to get breakfast started. She notices the garbage container is full. Damn! So she takes it out to the garbage drop. Suddenly, <gasps> she gets jumped by zombies who popped in from a nearby doorway to the stairs. <laughs> More zombies walk up the staircase and into the hall where the others are. The zombies crowd around the poor woman to reach in for a piece of her flesh. Realizing there isn't enough for all of them, they creep over to each apartment door and rattle the knobs. They are all locked, but these zombies split into groups. 
in an attempt to shoulder butt their way past those locked apartment doors. One zombie rattles the knob of the door to the single mother's apartment. She foolishly left that door unlocked. Her two children are still in their room, frozen in fear over hearing their mother's screams. Worse comes to worse now. More zombies creep into the apartment. The sounds of moaning scare the kids half to death. So one runs over to the bedroom door and locks it. One zombie creeps over to that door and starts shoulder butting on it to knock it down. A few more zombies join in to do the same. What happened to mommy? I don't know. I think she's hurt badly. We can't go out there to check. There's something out there that wants to get us. We've got to get out of here. One child climbs out of the window to get into the fire escape. There's a bunch of scary looking people outside. Yeah, fine. Let's do it under the bed. Okay. Both children crawl under the bed. Luckily, they share a king-size bed, which they both can fit under because they are small enough to do so. <sighs> the zombies behind their bedroom door finally manage to knock it down so they and the rest of the others creep in. Harlem, a nearby section, has completely fallen victim to the jaws of the undead ferocity as well. The streets are covered in pools of blood and remains of unfortunate victims, which many are still being gnawed upon by zombies. A boot box is just about all that remains untouched. It's been left on. We regret to inform you all that the situation in all of New York has completely and utterly grown worse since this past Friday, when the first sightings of a cannibalistic plague among people were reported. As I speak to all of you right now, the entire borough of the city has bordered on total chaos. From Brooklyn to Manhattan, as well as the Bronx, Harlem, Queens, Coney Island, Staten Island, and even upstate New York. More and more of these attacks have been reported by citizens and visitors alike. The NYPD and the National Guard are quickly losing control of trying to put an end to this phenomenal catastrophe resulting in the governor of New York notifying the president for immediate assistance, as did governors of nearby parts of the country. This just in. According to latest reports, hordes of these infected people have gathered together and managed to get past the police barricades which have been placed around most of Manhattan. They are wiping out the majority of Central Park. Along with Central Park, Fatalities are assumed to be in the millions. In spite of several barricades, a few thousand people have managed to evacuate from New York by taking the highways that commute from the George Washington, Manhattan, Williamsburg, and Brooklyn bridges. However, it is highly advised that no one under any circumstances attempt to cross the Brooklyn Bridge on foot, on a bicycle, or motorcycle. It has been completely overrun by these infected people. This is all we have available for news at this time. And it is possible that we will remain off the air for the remainder of this overwhelming situation. Good luck, everyone. The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is an attack warning. Repeat, this is an attack warning. Attack warning means that an actual attack against this country has been detected and that protective action should be taken. This is an emergency action notification. All broadcast stations shall broadcast emergency action notification message number two 
red card. This station has interrupted its regular program at the request of the United States government to participate in the emergency broadcast system. During this period, some stations will stay on the air as part of the emergency broadcast system. Those stations will broadcast news and information for the general public in the assigned areas. You should now tune your radio dial until you hear a station which is broadcasting news and information for your area. Until further notice, this station will not be broadcasting news and information for your area. I repeat, this station will not be broadcasting news and information for your area until further notice. You should now tune your radio dial until you hear a station which is broadcasting news and information for your area. The end. Or is it? Zombie, New York Contagion, written and produced by Alexis Gonzalez, based on the film Zombie, directed by Lucio Fulci, written by Dardano Sacchetti and Elisa Briganti, narration by Rob of Necrodemon, Demetra Papadinas as Harriet Salomon, Peter Needham as Al Salomon. Heather Foster as Lucy Romano, Joanne the Librarian, and Dr. Taylor. Caroline Peralta as Lourdes Oyola. Carrie Mowry as Matthew. Johnny Gordon as Eli. Nancy Marlowe Gordon as Nurse One. LV as Nurse Two and Zombie Vocals. Jennifer Lund Jorgens as Nurse Three. Todd Sparrows as the radio announcer. Tom Kilgallen as the Coney Island Barker and Men in Porn Theater. Abner Valdez as the clubber, Brad, the panhandler, and the stick-up man. Rocky Maxwell as UPS man, bartender, and zombie noises. Francesca Macera as Sue Ellen. Jeannie Betancourt, single mother. Foster Betancourt, boy one. Max Ripley as child two. And Troy Froman as the Slumlord. <laughs> Original music by Rick Stewart, featuring music by Fabio Fritzi, Rob of Necrodemon, and additional music from SoundDogs.com. <laughs>